So these are the assembly instructions of my Christmas mailbox. I'm going to start with the pedestal that our mailbox is sitting on. I've cut them out of this metallic shimmer paper. It's eight and a half by 11 shimmer paper. I'm just folding and burnishing the score lines for both pieces. I'm just putting glue on this side tab, taking my piece, and I'm, it's in the identical position as the other one. And I'm just laying it down right on top of that tab. I want that cut edge to be right on the score line of my tab, like so. Now I'm flipping my piece over. I folded one end over, I've put glue on one tab, and then I'm folding the other end over. And I'm making sure that my cut line is right against the score line of my tab. So next I'm folding in these two tabs. I'm just putting glue along the two tabs. And then I'm folding down the long side like so. And I want to make sure that the cut edge of my flap is right against the edge of my box. I'm putting glue all over that side and folding that final panel down, being careful that the sides are flush. I'm flipping my box around and I'm just going in there and spreading all that glue. Now I'm eventually going to do that for the other end as well, but I haven't quite decided if I'm going to glue my base down on a larger base to keep my mailbox steady, or I may just fill it with something to make the base itself heavy. This is 80 pound cardstock, and what I've done is I've taken red vinyl and I've decorated the panel with red vinyl. Well, the red vinyl is in the file, so you have to weed out the larger portions of the vinyl and using transfer tape, apply it to your cardstock. Remember, you don't want your, your transfer tape to be too sticky or it can rip your cardstock. So next, I'm just going to fold down on all those little tabs and at the other end as well. And then I'm going to fold down on all the score lines. There are eight score lines to fold in this direction. So I'm just folding down and burnishing all of them. After folding down on all the score lines, so I'm just putting glue on this tab. And then I'm folding my piece over so that the cut edge of my piece lines up with my score line. Now the vinyl doesn't line up perfectly. But that's okay. I prefer that the edge lines up with the score line on my tab. And once you pop that up, that forms the post for our mailbox. So now I have two pieces. This is going to piece. This is going to be the piece that attaches to the mailbox, and this is the piece that's going to attach to the pedestal. I'm just placing one end of the post into the opening, like so. Then I'm folding all those trapeze shapes over, like so. I'm just going to put glue on randomly just one of the trapeze shapes and I'm folding it over and I'm adhering it to the base like so. And I'm going to work my way around the shape doing the exact same thing. I'm putting glue on the trapeze shape and I'm just folding it the score line and folding it right against my shape. Now that the bottom is done, I'm going to take this rectangle and it has the octagon shape already cut out of it and it's going to go on the other end. And then fold those trapeze shapes over like so, just like I did for the bottom. I'm going to put glue on each one of these trapeze shapes and then pull the shape back onto that red panel. And I'm just going to work my way around doing that with every single one of those shapes. I just wanted to point out that the way that I positioned this piece was that these flat edges were both on top. So when I put this on a pedestal, my mailbox will jet out this way. So now that my post is done, I'm going to work on the mailbox itself. So I'm going to work on decorating my pieces before I assemble them. I'm going to start with the sides of my mailbox. The sides are comprised of a rectangle with a large tab at the bottom and I've already folded down on the score lines for those tabs. So I'm going to start with my sleigh with the wording on top of it. My sleigh is 80 pound cardstock. I used black and then I use this gold holographic sparkle vinyl for the lettering and then I have these two pieces also out of the holographic sparkle vinyl. 
that I'm going to place above my sleigh on either side. And I have my snowflake, which is going to be placed on top of my sleigh. And then I have two more snowflakes to add to each side here. So my two panels are going to be decorated exactly the same way. So I'm just going to glue down my sleigh and apply the vinyl pretty much where you see it for both of them. So now that I've decorated my two panels, I'm going to work on my little sign. So my sign is comprised of a piece of foil craft board, a piece of green 80 pound cardstock, and then cardstock that actually has a sepia finish to it. And I've applied more of that holographic sparkle vinyl in red and in gold for the lettering. And I've also applied holographic sparkle vinyl to these two pieces, and this is gold. I have my layer of foil craft board and I'm gluing my green layer and I'm trying as best I can not only to stack those little holes on top of one another but also keep that little tiny fine border all the way around. And I'm doing the same with this piece and then I'm going to put glue on the back of one of these, glue them together like so back to back and then I'm going to take these two pieces. Now I folded down on the score line at the top. So I'm just putting glue from the score line to the bottom of my filigree, placing the other one directly on top. And then I have some embroidery floss. I've cut two strands that are approximately eight inches long. I'm going to thread the first one through and knot it. And then I'm going to thread the second through the second hole and knot it. I'm threading my sign through my filigree so the filigree can act like little hooks so I'm just playing with my embroidery thread until it hangs at a height that I like so I'm just gonna knot that and then snip it and then I'm not the one on the other side and snip the excess from it I put glue on both these tabs that are folded back from my sign and then I'm going to place this so that the curve of my filigree is right on the edge of my panel and my panel is centered over this flat bit of my post so that's the way I know that it's right in the middle. I've done the sides now I'm working on the front and the back of my mailbox this is the front one and it has the flap that opens up your mailbox so I'm just folding down on the score line that's at the bottom then I'm going to fold on that score line that's at the bottom and the score lines at the side this part's the same for both the front and the back of the mailbox. So I'm just pulling down those little triangles to create that curve. Then I'm just pulling down on the score line at the side and burnishing that. I have two pieces that decorate the front and the back. The green piece is just going to go at the back, like so. And I want an even border all the way around. And for the front, I need it to flip downwards. So this panel is going to be exactly at that score line. I'm just putting glue all over this panel, so from the score line all the way to that curved top. I'm placing it so that it's right at that score line at the bottom and that there's an even gap between the edge of the golden pa panel and the edge of my mailbox. So, and so the other one I've already folded down on the score lines. I've got my green decorative layer. I was going to use this image to decorate the bottom of it, but it looked a little bit plain. So instead, I used my watercolor pen and gave it a bit of a watercolor effect. I'm just going to glue those down. Now, I'm going to use double-sided tape on this because of that foil finish. Uh, double-sided tape seems to work better than glue. I just wanted to mention that this is 80 pound cardstock and I've used some Cricut glitter cardstock for the white part. So I have a plain rectangle, so that's going to be the bottom of my mailbox. And then I have both my sides that I've already decorated. And I've got everything with the right side facing down on the mound. Putting glue on all along the tabs on one of the sides. Make sure they're flush at the bottom of the top and fold that tab down. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. I folded the tab back and I'm putting glue on the tab. I'm putting the bottom right up against that score line of the tab and then folding down. 
And so next I have this panel that has tabs on both sides. It's going to be curved and form the top of our mailbox. Start with the left side and I'm just putting glue all along that side. So I'm just gluing my side panel to the piece that becomes the curved piece. Then I'm putting glue on the other tab. I've got my side piece and I'm joining it right to that tab. So now that I've got all my seams together, I've got these pieces of craft board and I've got two that are the same size and those are for the sides and I've got one that's a little bit wider and that's for the bottom. I'm just going to slip it into that bottom. You see this is the side and it's the bottom. So I'm just going to glue this panel into the bottom like so. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the two side panels. I'm just going to put glue on them and slip them in and that's just to strengthen the side of my mailbox. I'm going to take my front piece. So now I've put my glue on the tab at the bottom and I'm just gluing it so that my score lines are even with the score lines of each side. And I'm going to turn my piece 180 degrees. So this is the back of my mailbox. I'm putting glue on the tab, joining my piece. I'm going to flip it around just to make sure it's exactly where it needs to be. So I'm going to start with my front piece and I'm going to put glue just along that tab. Adhere the tab to the side of my box. So this is just the straight edge. It hasn't started curving yet. And then I'm going to do the other side as well. So I'm putting glue on the straight part of that tab, gluing it in place. And then I'm just going to fold those little points inwards and glue them to the top. And each one of those triangles is going to get glued to the top of my mailbox. And now for the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. My mailbox is open at the front to help me access the back panel. And I'm just going to put glue on both sides and raise them up into position. And then again, I'm going to put glue on all those little teeth and make sure that they follow along the curve of my shape. I have these white strips of 80 pound cardstock and I've applied red vinyl to them just like I did for the post of my mailbox. I'm taking these trim pieces and I'm gluing them right to the edge of my mailbox all the way around the curve and they meet at the top in the middle so I'm just going to glue all four strips down just like that. So now I've got my little flag for the side of my mailbox so I've cut out three identical pieces. I'm just gluing them together. This is just for strength. I have this gold brad and I'm stacking all three of those holes on top of one another and I'm putting that brad through and opening it up. Uh, it's a little bit tight. I'm going to loosen it a little bit only because I want that flag to go up and down quite easily. Not too easily, but easily enough. So I have some foam tape at the back and I'm going to remove the liner from my foam tape. And I'm just going to position my flag just as it starts to curve. And then I have the closure for my box. So this piece has score lines and what you want to do is you want to fold down on the diagonal score line and then you want to fold on this score line so that this piece is in that direction. And you want to do the same thing with this one. You're folding on that diagonal score line and then you're folding this piece outwards like so. And then I'm going to fold on that top score line. So now I'm going to flip my piece over, unfold it all. I'm putting glue from this score line all the way down to all these pieces. And then I'm going to fold these back into position like so. I want those two holes on top of one another like that. And I want this piece to remain flat. I also have this piece. This is the second part of the closure, the part that's going to go on the door. I'm going to fold it in half and then fold those two flaps away from one another like so. I'm going to glue those two rings together. 
This is going to be the top closure. I'm going to put glue from this score line to the end all along. I'm going to position this at the top of my mailbox. And then I'm going to bring my door so that it's closed and I'm going to lower that lock. I want to position this piece on my door so that when this falls down, I can lock them together like, like so. So I'm going to put double-sided tape on the back of these two squares. Then I'm going to take the backing off my double-sided tape, lowering my top lock, and I want the bottom one so, so I'm matching the holes together and then I'm lowering them together and this will help me position my piece so that it's at the right spot. So when this piece lowers down, it's even with the piece that it locks into. So I have these two pieces of eight pound cardstock and I've applied more vinyl to them and glue these two pieces together. I'm going to just slip it in so it serves as the stopper for my door to stay shut. Now I have the bottom. I'm going to put glue all along this panel and then I'm going to adhere it to the bottom of my mailbox. So you just want to glue that down so that your post is as centered as possible on the bottom of your mailbox. And so next I have my little pedestal, which was the first thing that I created and I'm just gluing it to the pedestal. So now I have these pieces of holly, I'm just curving up on these leaves and applying three berries per set. I'm going to adhere these to my mailbox as decoration. So I still have my box open, but it seems to be holding for now. I'm going to have to either decide to put some weight into it or leave it as is. And I've glued my bottom of my pole to the pedestal 